Hello, everybody. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Once again, we are checking out the F3D modding Peterbilt 389 car hauler uh, that is available for purchase for $25. Now, you get the truck and you get the trailer. And uh, keep in mind that when you pick up, say, the Subaru Impreza's we're picking up today here uh, in El Paso and taking them to Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, the front part where the truck is, you have to add those as an extra, basically, not an extra, but as a piece of the customization to the truck. All right, enough chit chat. Let's push our parking brake in, put this thing into gear and get rolling. I believe we have the uh, Cummins ISX engine in this thing with a 13 speed in it. Uh, and I believe it also is using the um, Creech Bomb ISX sounds. Now I did have the patch put in here that was for it um, that came with the modded truck, but I don't know if the sounds are 100% working right. However, we're just gonna roll with it. It does have a lot of the default sounds, including the interior, uh, sadly. So we have that uh, going on today. But hopefully y'all had a great weekend and you're having a great week ahead. Lots to talk about, of course and uh, we're gonna enjoy our trip up to Santa Fe. Now I turned off the snow. We're escaping the snowscape for a little bit here as we're enjoying some more warmer weather and we're gonna be going north towards uh, Santa Fe from El Paso, Texas. Now I'm staying out of Texas. I did do um, some test driving uh, in Texas and I was still having those skips and stutters. We'll see if it, uh, it's still a problem here in New Mexico as well when we get there, but uh, I don't know. It's something to do with Texas. I've been having uh, those frame issues. Well, the, the skips, the stutters, uh, I don't enjoy. Okay, I see that car there. We need to protect our lane here. We have to get in the right lane, so let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. Well, hopefully your uh, year is off to a good start as well. Uh, did you make any New Year's resolutions? If you did, let me know in the comments below. I have a couple of myself. And uh, I do wanna go over that in a bit, but uh, for now, we're just gonna stick to the basics as we get out of El Paso, Texas here. Once we get on the highway, things will be a little bit easier going for us, I think. So a lot of you have been asking, where is GTA 5? Where is OCRP? Um, all of that will be returning on the channel soon enough uh, I did take a small break from it, especially after the GTA 5 RP week that Rockstar put on. I uh, took a break from it, and uh, I will be back at it very soon. Now, with that said, there's some changes that are going to be made to OCRP as a whole. Um, I plan on kind of streamlining a lot of the assets we have because um, a lot of the assets are a bit uh, a bit all over the place. They don't um, they don't like to work with each other sometimes as far, as far as collisions go and things like that. So we might see some old MLOs and interiors that we know and love might go bye-bye eventually as I push Sandy Shores into the final stage of its life um, and some other parts of Los Santos as well, the map as a whole, um, before the life cycle ending of GTA 5. Now, realistically, we probably have about a year and a half, two, probably two years before we're going to be uh, moving on to the GTA 6 platform. And whenever GTA 6 comes out, I will be uh, pretty much ending my GTA 5 stuff, kind of like I did in GTA 4. Um, and I will be covering GTA 6 exclusively here uh, on the channel as well. I'm getting some bottoming out happening with this truck. Um, I think it's something to do with Serial Black's mod and this truck don't like each other. Um, I did adjust a lot of different settings to try to combat that, but it's still happening and we might see it along the drive today. Make it right on red, because we can. Nobody's coming this way, so we're good. Yep, we're good. Thank you, we're good. We're gonna get on the highway, and I'm gonna stay in this lane right now. I see you, but do you see me? Yes, they do. Okay, cool. awesome. Making sure I wasn't gonna run somebody over. Let's get on the highway, shall we? There we go, sweet. Seven low. Let's go into eight, eight low here, and we're on the open road just like that. Very cool to have a car hauler here in uh, America Truck Simulator. Now, we had to go the payware route, 
However, I do know there is another one out there. A lot of you told me about Blades uh, Western Star, and I appreciate all the comments about it. So if you like this one, let me know. I'll pick up Blades, and we'll check that one out and compare them. Um, so I can tell you right out of the gate, as far as this mod goes, um, there's not a lot of customization to it. And I've noticed on the hood, you see those rivets there on the hood? They're not the, they're not the highest quality. And uh, this interior of this truck is very basic. As you can see, you can't even put a blanket on it. Um, and there's one side of, you know, one type of dash on it. It's just, it's just very basic. Uh, and you can't do a lot of customization. And on the exterior of the truck, you can change out the bumper. Uh, there's only like two bumpers to choose from. You can't change the headlights out on it at all. Um, and it has very, very minimal customization. It comes with its own wheels and tires. Um, but that's pretty much it when it boils down to it. So that compared to seeing what blades will give us, uh, maybe you'll have a better idea if you're interested in a, in a car hauler. Now, I'm kind of surprised that a car hauler is not just in the game. You know, they're all over the place. They're on the roads, everywhere you go. Um, very popular to see them on the... Man, I'm, yeah, I'm still bottoming out. Uh, to see those on the roads, but uh, they're not in the game. So maybe eventually we'll get something like that. It'd be really, really cool. Now there's a limitation, like I was talking about before, um, with the truck itself, you have to add that as a customization option, the Impreza or the Camaro, whatever you're picking up. Um, and it seems to work well enough if whatever you have on the truck, it's going to give you that cargo for the trailer itself. So that's how we have a load of Imprezas today. Now the Subarus. All right, Schuster, and I'm not going that way. I think we stay in the middle lane here. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. That is what I plan on doing. So that's what's going on with all of that. Um, and uh, I do like it, though. It's cool to see a proper car carrier because, you know, you're always pulling the cars, and that's one thing. But when you have the actual piece that goes over the top of the truck that makes it a car hauler, um, it's a really neat look as far as the aesthetics of it and what you see out of the the cab. All right, Las Cruces is uh, 35 and we're coming up on Anthony one mile in this general area. Love Jazzy Cat mods, of course. That's what we're using here for all the traffic, all the cars you're seeing on the road. Um, the density is by SIP, C-I-P. Uh, when, when I say SIP, that's what I say. Talk text crash. Well, apparently we're just driving straight and we're crashing. <laughs> it was bottoming out on us a little bit there. Right lane must exit. Okay, y'all are going to Anthony, right? You're not coming over in our lane? Sweet. Awesome. Glad to see it. So as far as uh, New Year's resolutions go, um, one of the things that uh, we've rolled into is eating a plant-based diet, more so uh, just eliminating meat completely. Now, it may come to a shock to some people, but uh, I've never really eaten a lot of meat. We like, eat some chicken here and there and, and steak on a very, very small occasion, but it's not going to be that big of a leap uh, as far as my diet goes. But uh, eliminating meat is definitely something that is going to be happening this year. Uh, car, I need to get over. I need to get over. I need to get over. You're not going to let me over. We're going to get over this one here. Actually, we stay in this lane. We might be okay. We had a stutter. I don't know. I'm going to stay in this lane. They're not letting me over anyway. So we'll just take exit 144 here. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. Uh, but if you're on a uh, plant-based diet, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you... Uh, what you roll with. I know there's uh, some meat substitutes out there. I've had the Impossible Burger and things like that. And they're pretty darn good. Pretty, pretty darn good. And uh, last time I was full, I, I was a full vegetarian diet was in uh, about 2012. Right when I started YouTube. No, right before I started YouTube, actually, I did the P90X and uh, did a full vegetarian diet when I did that. But I can tell you, after uh, switching to just, you know, plants only, I feel so much better. Just so much better. Energy levels, all that. Very good. And, you know, I don't even really miss a lot of the other stuff I was eating, like the, the you know, boneless chicken wings. 
You can just get cal cauliflower, get them in a get them in a hot sauce or something like that, and, and you pretty much have wings. So for me, it's, it hasn't been that jarring, but uh, I plan on letting you know what the benefits are like as we roll along. One thing is for certain, gut health immediately rose. Um, I noticed that just eliminating any animal meat uh, that that happened. Inspection station one mile. I hope we just get to stay in this one. I'm gonna get over in the right lane here. I don't need to be chilling in the left. That's bad practice. But uh, for the most part, that's what the New Year's resolution is, is to just kind of commit to more of the plant-based diet and, uh, and and rule with that. Do not drive on shelter. Wouldn't dream of it. All right, inspection station's closed. That's what we would like to see. Well, it's nice to see some uh, greenery around here instead of the snow. Now I'm using the mild winter, the autumn mod. So that's why we're going to see some of the deciduous trees that are uh, gone as far as leaves go. So you might see that a little bit later on here. Scaro, one, was it 15 or 115? I think 115. It's a nice Chrysler 300C. What a beautiful drive up north. Haven't been down here in New Mexico in a minute. It's been a while. In a bit. Now, uh, another thing that's going to be coming up will be uh, I'm going to the Rolex 24 race down in Daytona. So if you're going to that, let me know in the comments below. Maybe you'll see myself, uh, Siv Ryan, Bay Area Bugs, and Mr. Dammit Dave. All four of us are going down for the race. So you might see us down there. Be sure to say hello. Very excited for it. Rolex 24 is such a great time. And uh, it'll be no different this year, I am certain. Now I'm flying out of St. Louis uh, direct in or, or into Atlanta. And then flying Atlanta direct into Daytona Beach. Now I've never done that before. Um, I don't plan on doing a vlog, but I think maybe Ryan or somebody's doing a vlog. So maybe that'll happen. I don't know. But I didn't plan on vlogging the trip. I'm excited to fly direct into Daytona Beach, though. That'll be really cool. Fly direct into there, and then uh, I'll be departing out of Orlando, I believe, is where I'm going to be departing. I really dialed in uh, the smoothness on the track IR a lot more. Um, and I, I, I jumped it up so I can move my head a little bit easier and it's not as jarring for y'all. So that's the, the reason why we're seeing that. But looking around freely with that old uh, yep, Toyota Camry there. An older one. Okay, he's just staying there. All right, we're fine here on this side. The truck gets pretty good fuel mileage from what I've seen so far. Not bad at all. I mean, we're getting 4.7. Currently, uh, I am uh, kind of going ham on the throttle here and there. <laughs> it's 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 a lot of weight. I'm not sure what the weight is. I'm sure that is not good for the uh, you know, I'm sure the customer not giving us our weights is a bad thing. But if we get pulled in for inspection station or a weight station, we'll find out what the weight is on this run. I can look it up as well, but I like to see what the gross weight is compared um, with Serial Black's physics mod. It's nice uh, to have, you know, that weight, and you feel it. You can't just go willy-nilly down the highway at 80 miles an hour. You know, you're going to struggle to maintain 60, 65 sometimes, especially when we're weighed down like this with a bunch of cars. Now we have a grade coming up here. I'm going to turn my Jake all the way down on low. Let's get it ready to go in case we need it. Actually, you know, what? maybe we'll go medium on the Jakes here. Gusty winds. Ah, we're fine on speed. I'll just keep that on for right now in case we have an abrupt stop or something like that. So they had a steering wheel cover on their their Jeep. Now, is this a, a myth? Let me know. Um, it's either a myth or it's, you know, it's a, a wild wife's tale or something, but 
I've heard that if you have a steering wheel cover on your wheel and you get in an accident, uh, you can be blamed for it. Again, could be just, uh, you know, an old fib, an old tail. Rest area this way. Oh, we're not stopping the rest area, but these guys are slowing way down, aren't they? Wait, look how beautiful. This game looks so, so good, man. And I'm not, I'm not using any uh, graphics mod besides the, the mild winter autumn mod right now. And it looks really good. Been very happy with America Truck Sim lately. I haven't messed around with it too much. And yeah, it's, it's not near as uh, stuttery as Texas was when I was testing Texas recently. I was like, you know, we haven't been to Texas in a while since the, the state came out, but I was still having those problems. But as soon as I get away from Texas, everything's fine. So I don't know. Very strange. Definitely excited to see uh, the change coming to 1.50 of the game. Oh, we got uh, the big Julian. Right there. You know, you know. And yeah, the Monte Carlo. been pretty frigid that's for dang sure man oh i say that and there was our first stutter of the day or probably the second um it's been very frigid and cold uh not just where i live but i'm sure where you live as well and hopefully y'all are staying warm during that cold shot that came through and uh i don't think we're out of the woods yet now i think they're gonna, we're gonna see things warm up and then afterwards with another we have another storm system moving through that could uh cause some some problems as far as snow goes for for everyone this is really cool man having a car just chilling on top of your cab right above us we know there's a subaru rolling through socorro yeah i mean like we're barely breaking 60 65 miles an hour on this run And it's not a slouch. It's like a 500 horsepower engine. It's just uh, struggling a little bit here with the weight. Lenar. Lenar? I think it's called Lenar. Company there. Oh, there we go. Now we got some speed. Getting closer to 70 miles an hour. Look at us go. I don't know what this Maxim is doing in the left lane. My God, y'all are going slow on the Airstream trailer. Hard to say. I show you guys the truck a little bit better in the outside view, but uh, I'm really, really bad at driving the outside view. I might crash doing it. So we're just going to chill with the drive for right now. I'll try to get some uh, outside shots if I can later on. Yeah, that's the default Jake brake sound. So I don't think that that is a custom. I don't think the custom sounds are working 100%. So I need to find out why that is the case. Or try some different engines or something like that. That might help be helpful as well. Beautiful drive. Forgot how cool this is. That was the Rio Grand. Look at that. That's awesome. We got the Rio Bravo Boulevard in one mile. And we're starting to get up in the mountains a little bit here. Albuquerque International Sunport, exit 220. So we'll be rolling through Albuquerque. Uh, is that a GTO? Is that a Bonneville? That might be a Bonneville. There. Might be. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a GTO. That's a Bonneville. I think. <laughs> Could be a different Pontiac. It's a Pontiac for sure, though. All right, north on 25. Yep, this takes you all the way to Colorado eventually. 
look at that. We have a sign for Kansas. Oh, it's even like one of those things that flips over. That's cool. It's the American Truck Sim one because that's showing the, the anniversary Kenworth. Yeah, good uh, good highway run today. I've been doing a lot of side road driving lately, so it's sometimes good to just get on, you know, Interstate 25 like this and just go driving for a while. Red Bull. I haven't had a Red Bull in a while. I like the blueberry ones. Those are good. Normal Red Bull, I'm not a big fan of. It's it's like a bubblegum taste. Weird artificial bubblegum taste to it. Santa northbound. I do have the motion platform on today. The next level one. It's just been a very uh, calm drive. Here's Albuquerque, New Mexico, Montgomery Boulevard. That Toyota right there. It's an old Corolla too. Oh, slow down. Where's that the initial D car? AE 80, not the AE 86. Trueno. Looks like one. Might be. Maybe that's not the Corolla. This is a El Dorado coming up here on the left. I always wanted this particular car, this model. I owned a uh, 1990 Cadillac Seville back in the day. Then I owned a 94 DeVille. But I always wanted that, that model right there of the El Dorado. And I came close to buying one one time, but I chose to not do it because it was just too expensive for my income at the time. Love, love Cadillacs. Owned an 87 Cadillac as well. It was a Coupe de Ville. I just love the Coupe de Villes. Now, keep in mind, these weren't like brand new cars or anything. These were uh, older. It's like a 90 Seville. It was well, like the second car I had. My first car was my 1978 Oldsmobile Tornado, uh, and then I had a Chevy Lumina for a while before moving over to the Cadillac. Had the 90 Cadillac Seville, then I had a 98 uh, Saturn SC2. Yeah, it was a SC2. And then, we'll climb this hill. Let's go ahead and drop her down to eight low. Uh, and then I had uh, the 94 DeVille was a great car until it died the uh wouldn't hold oil pressure anymore the gasket went out on it which really sucked and that was a that was a dealership car so i was like still paying making payments on that one so once that was all settled and good to go i was uh kind of free and clear of that then i got a 2001 honda accord Love that car. One with like the triangle lights on it. That was a cool car. Didn't know I had that and then I got the Saturn SC2. Not the wagon. The wagon came way down the road. I've owned quite a few cars. <laughs> and then I had the 87 Coupe de Ville had that one for a while and then I got a 77 Oldsmobile Tornado I owned that for moving on to the wagon station wagon the Saturn station wagon had that and then after the Saturn station wagon that's whenever I which was the SW4 then I got the the truck that we own today the 2017 Ram and that thing's completely paid off and free and clear. And I still own the motorcycle. So I've owned quite a few vehicles in my time, for sure. I'm probably forgetting one. I think it was a Chevy Astro van I owned for like a week because it blew up. <laughs> I remember I bought it off my buddy and uh, 
He's like, yeah, it blew up. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay me <laughs> for it anymore. He's like, it's junk. I think I was going to buy it for $500 or something, and it lasted literally a week. I kind of knew it was going going bad because the uh, it was burning more antifreeze than it was fuel, and that's usually a bad sign. Slow down for all this. This thing uh, floats gears pretty, pretty good. That's not bad. Put it in first gear here. Well, I think we're getting close to our uh, our destination here. I think we have made it. We just we're gonna be in traffic for a minute, which is fine. Let's do the old fashioned give them room in front of you trick. I don't know what this guy in front of us is doing in the in the van. He's got okay. There we go. He had his hazards on for a second. I was like, what are you doing, dude? You know, what? while we're in traffic, we can go to the outside view and check it out a little bit more. Here's the truck. It kind of looks like the default. 389 for the most part and then we have the addition of the cars on there as well but the trailer and everything is really good quality I like it a lot and uh, I'm excited to see the new the new updates to the mod can only get better from here you know and we're back in traffic ever so slightly just kind of rolling it rolling it and we're gonna have to stop Looks like, although we're we're green light. Oh, we're good. Keep it rolling. There we go. Yeah, this guy just keeps like flashing his lights, or I don't know what they're doing. Are they hitting the car in front of them? That's making them think that uh, they need to put their hazards on. I mean, possible. It's always a possibility that's the case. Cerillos Road. Yep, we're going this direction here. So, anybody over there? Nope, doesn't look like it. Get on over, buddy. Oh, hello. Yeah, I'm just going to go around this guy. He slammed the brakes there. So wheat. Avoid all that mess. And make it right on red. Yeah, I need to adjust the brakes on this truck, too. Oh, nope. He's good. Oh, he, he's going. You guys have the right of way, not me. Oh, look at that. That's what we're hauling right there. Same car. Now we got the green. Part of me car is coming through. Engine brake use prohibited. There you go. So if we see a sign, we won't use it. How about that? That's, that's I think that'll be a happy medium. We talked about this last time. That some people get on get on to my case about using the engine brake in small towns. Um, but how about if we see the sign, we won't use it. If we don't see a sign, we will. That that way it's more realistic because some towns don't care about it, you know. Santa Fe discovered. Yep, in this profile. We haven't been here in a minute. Almost went for the engine brake. Almost. But we did not this time. All right, right side here. Santa Fe city limit begins. Welcome to Santa Fe. Let's go into the Tesla here. I know. Should have probably got Teslas for the run, but there's no Subaru plant <laughs> or a dealership to go to. So we're just going to pretend it's a Subaru dealership and not just Tesla. I know they you can do Teslas, I think, on this one. Could be wrong about that. All right. Now, dropping this off might be a little more tricky than we think. But we are going to try getting this lane here where we want it at. They want it on the back corner on the left. Oh, that won't be too bad then. I, I think I know exactly where they're they're going to have that at. Oh, wait for this car. As we go in there and then go to the right, we should be in a good setup for it. All right, car. I'm going to go because the, you have a light anyway. We're pulling in regardless. Now, I haven't ever backed this trailer up, so I don't know what to expect from that. Sometimes they can be a little, oh yeah, this is gonna be tough. But no, if I go to the right and then back into the left, we'll be okay, I think. But making this turn, ooh, boy, boy, I don't know. We're gonna try. Got our hazards on here. We're just gonna hug this and go to the right and then back up to the left. 
I think that's how... Yep, right there. It's going to be tough. A little bit of a blind back on this one, but we're going to try it anyway. I don't know if I can make this turn. Should be able to. I'm um, doing a get out and look. I'm going to make sure. I think we'll make this no problem. This is a, a wider turn than I thought it was. I was to make sure that I wasn't going to hit anything on that side. All right, let's just turn it this way to the right and kind of hug this left side here. And it should make the turn. No problem. One more left. I don't want to hit that yellow bollard there. We're probably going to hit the curb a little bit. But yeah, it, it's going to make it. Just got to be real slow and patient with this thing. And then we get to go straight back from here and try to point this trailer to the other direction. That's what we want to do. So we'll see how this goes. Um, we're going to do another get out and look and try to just get an idea of what we want to do here. So they want it in that back corner right there just to the left. So we just need to point the trailer to our right when we're sitting in the truck uh, and, and get around that corner right there. I think if we get it straight back from there, it should be fine. All right. Push that guy in and we'll start backing up here. Get the trailer pointed in the right direction we want it to go, which is this direction here without hitting these yellow things. That's going to be the question. Can we do that? I don't want to take it right where we just had it. We want to go right past there. So it's actually pretty good here. It's technically a blind back, but it's not too bad. If we go ooh, careful, don't want to turn too sharp. We just kind of stay in this zone. We should be all right for the most part. Yeah, right there is looking good. Now, once we get back in there, I don't know. We'll see how that ends up being. And this building kind of jots out at us a little bit here. So there is that. I just need to be able to see what I'm doing. There we go. No, this is looking good. All right, let's get out and look. Make sure we're not going to hit anything back there and... Uh, and see how much further we need to go. Yeah, looking at things here, I think it's going to be just fine. We just need to come back with the trailer and then hug the right side of our cab to, or the uh, the tractor to the building. All right, let's keep it rolling back here. Now we need to get underneath the trailer. So bring the cab of our truck this direction because we're in that spot for the most part. As you can see right there, see there's the lines crank it this way. Ooh, don't want to hit the building though. Just going to keep it rolling back this direction. That seems to be fine right there. But more maybe. We need to clear the building and go in the spot at the same time. That's going to be more difficult than it looks. Uh, I think we're okay for the most part. A little bit more this way. Ooh, it's going to be tough, man. This is a, a longer it's a longer trailer than it looks, but I think we're going to have to do the Ooh, I don't know. I need to get just around the, my nose of the truck around this building and get to all the way to the right as far as I can without hitting it. This is not going to be easy. <laughs> we have to be a little bit more shallow to the right, kind of like this. Now I'll go to the right and get in the spot, in the zone here without hitting the building. It's going to be tough. But we're pretty much there. Keep it rolling back. I just, it, it's going to be a little crooked, it looks like. I, I don't think it's, I don't think we can fit the whole truck in here. Um, We might have to go even sh more shallow than this. So, like, even straighter on the trailer to the right. Like this. Because it seems like it wants to turn that direction. Now we go straight. It might help here. So you have to get that trailer right where we need it. We can always adjust it afterwards, but I think that's what we had to do. It's just get this thing nice and straight. A little bit more this way. I hope they'll take green here because I'm not. <laughs> I'm hoping. Yep, there's green. Let's straighten that out. Straighten it out. Up here to the right we go this there we go it's in there i mean we'll take it let's have a look see see what we got yeah it's a little crooked but it's not too bad we'll we'll definitely take that i'm, I'm fine with it cool all right let's go ahead and uh we will kill that kill the engine 
and let's see what we ended up getting here. We got an excellent 347 miles, seven hours, 53 minutes, 75 gallons of fuel consumed total there. So yeah, not too bad at all. Let me know what you thought of the mod in the comments below. Check it out if you want to, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.